Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? Those were the words that introduced us to the underwater utopia of Rapture, a city led by one individual. But his ideology got corrupted and he weaponized it against his own people. And we saw the same with his counterpart. Let's look at what they did and how they were able to weaponize their beliefs. I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. How far can you take individualism before it starts to destroy the community, and how far can you take the community before it starts to destroy individualism? It's a very interesting question and one that uh, you see a lot of in a lot of pop culture over the decades, but the one I'm going to focus on today is actually Bioshock. Um, the premise is that a very wealthy industrialist, Andrew Ryan, which for those of you paying attention is a... Uh, is an anagram for Ryan Rand. Rand. Yes. Yeah. And um, he builds this magnificent underwater city. And underwater because otherwise it'd be discovered and all this other stuff. But what's interesting about the way it is portrayed is that it is the ultimate individualist utopia. Everybody gets the sweat of their brow. You can do whatever you want scientifically, artistically, doesn't matter. You can do it. But doesn't really pan out so well. And that's ignoring all the genetic you know, superpowers going on. That's <laughs> not the actual point I'm going after here. <laughs> they so, you know, that, that is very much there for the video game aspect. But right. it's, um, it's very interesting to look at. There's um, audio logs. They're like voice recorders that you can pick up throughout the game that kind of give the backstory, the lore, so to speak, of right. Rapture. And there's an artist, you know, who is criticizing some of Ryan's more controversial opinions. Well, she's expressing her individualism. But that directly affects Ryan's, and so he has her not just blacklisted, but at one point killed over this. Then on the other side, you have Atlas or Frank Fontaine, who is a well, con man. Atlas, which is for those who Atlas don't know, uh, Atlas Shrugged, which was a book by Ayn Rand. Rand. So yeah, yeah. And so you know what he does, and he does both uh, as the Fontaine, his innate personality, and as the Atlas persona, sets up a bunch of poor houses and. Um, soup kitchens and all these what we consider charities um, he tries to make a very socialistic sort of state under himself where everybody is equal and we're all fighting to overthrow the oppressor but he's a tyrant the same as any other just trying to seize control of the city through different means you watch it and Ryan is using individualism to the point of death and so is Atlas or Fontaine and uh, spoilers in case anybody cared yep. 13 year old game um but it's a, uh, I'm sorry, that just minor, you know, side rant. If you care about spoilers after a decade, you're too late. I'm sorry, <laughs> move on. Um, but it's, uh, it's I'm going to spoil Star Wars too. Vader's Luke's father. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, uh, see, I'm expressing my individualism here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and that ties into when does your individualism damage the community? Well, if you do everything at the expense of the people around you, not just your own benefit, but it comes at the cost of their well-being. And the same you know, way around. If you're supporting the community at the expense of yourself, that's where I think you get that crossover well, and, there. And you, you really have to look into things that are like moralistic integrity uh, and I, ideas that, um, you know, uh, um, Adam Smith, you know, yeah. the, the wealth of nations. Yeah. He got into is that you know you know capitalism works only with those his book before Wealth of Nations which I cannot recall the name of at the time of this recording but uh, <laughs> he was a moralistic philosopher and said that you know the only way that you uh, work in a capitalistic society or an individualistic society yeah. where you is if you is if you function morally you have to have a moral Indeed. ground point you 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 have to come to this idea that what you do must not only you know 
Can, yes, can it be for the benefit of yourself? Absolutely, but if it's only for the benefit of yourself, it's destructive to the rest of Ryan society. would disagree. As long as it is in your own interest and you did it, he's good with it. Until well, it starts to affect him. Well, but but but, but that goes <laughs> against his the power. entire that, that goes against the entire idea of um, oh Ayn Rand's philosophy objectivism. Objectivism. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. It was there. It wasn't. I was like, yes. ah, but um, but that goes against the Having entire. I actually I, read Atlas Shrugged. Yes. Yeah, yeah. By the way, no. uh, I've read uh, great, I've ever, great, excerpts. I've not read as great uh, philosophically. Really dense. I should try and read it. Oh Ooh. yeah. Oh yeah. No, well, most Ooh. of them are. Most of them are. Oh, have you uh, read Adam Smith? Uh, you. Hey, good luck. Um, but the uh, the the idea here is that if you take if you take and take and take and only for yourself, you have to realize that the world around you will eventually affect you. And then if you take too much from the world around you to benefit oneself, it will start to affect the world around you. But, but that, that on the on the transverse side of that, if the world just takes, keeps take, taking, 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 take, taking, it takes too much from you, and thus you cannot you survive. survive. And, and yeah, and that's and it's very interesting because these uh, figure these uh, concepts are individualized into two men. Yes, Andrew Ryan and Frank Fontaine slash yeah. Atlas. Yes, um, Frank Fontaine is Atlas. Yes, so okay. uh, for future, I've not I'll played get, the Bioshock series. Yeah, throwing that so out, so I will use them interchangeably. I will try and use both. Nope, you're good. But um, so what Fontaine Atlas does is. Um, he sets up all these benefits because he's looking at all the people who get left behind in Ryan's great individualist, you know, objectivist paradise, right? You know, everybody comes down to this magnificent underwater utopia and yet somebody still has to mop the floor. But, you know, Ryan also brought in all the best scientists, musicians, artists, sculptors, um, engineers, and these are all people who are the top of their field. And you're going to hand them a mop? Well, that doesn't sound very objectivist or individualist, now does it? No, it doesn't. And so, you know, and naturally, you know, and this is well, where we get I, 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 Can yeah. I interject yeah, 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 really yeah. quickly? Yeah. What is so wrong with being the best of the best of running a mop? Or the best of the best running a broom? I'd argue or nothing. The, or the best of the best turning a wrench? I, I would say that there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and I would say this, that this idea that society puts a certain value on things is good because some things provide a huge worth to society, whereas other things don't provide as good of a worth to society. But being the best of the best of something provides worth to oneself. Well, it's and, just, and I think that that's where, that's where these, these ideas... Yeah, it's and it's really it's, hard to... You know, why an would, engineer who designs... A, a, a city that runs off of nuclear fusion and has it actually perpetual runs off power, of, but someone still it's needs volcanic, to mop. Actually. But, yeah, but, it's but volcanic. yeah, but, but, but yeah, 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 but 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 it still needs someone still needs to mop the floor. Someone still needs to so caretake. Somebody you still, hire the best. Yeah. You you go and you find the best. You know, custodian. You go and you find the best mechanic. Yes, I mean you're. T I think you literally are about you know twenty leagues under the sea. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, well, yeah, uh, yeah, and, this, and yeah. so you know, are you going to hire the B rate mechanic? I mean, you know, when you find Rapture in the game, it's leaking. That's not a good thing when you're under the ocean. No, and you know, there's well, a great, especially a city that's domed under the ocean. No, yeah, no, game. it's a great line in the second game is that if you already feel the soft patter of rain on your helmet, you're already fired. Yeah, and it's uh, so it's you know a great you know kind of disconnect and you see this because Ryan is very much you know a stand-in for Ayn Rand whereas Atlas is actually kind of a stand-in for Karl Marx and uh, interesting that they that he went with it with the Atlas idea because yeah. I like the I okay yeah and so you kind of get that discrepancy between the two and this is where I find the conversation really naturally goes if you look at the uh, philosophical and uh, social ramifications of what happened in the story is um both individuals tried to use their philosophy for their own gain. Ryan wanted to stay in control and Fontaine wanted that control. And so, but they went through different means. Ryan did horrific scientific experiments to, uh, through the, you know, the ability to shoot lightning and some of these. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, all, the game mechanics. Yes, yeah, yeah. indeed. That's all contextualized. That was what, Adam? Adam? Adam, Adam that's right. Yes. yes. And um, I, it's, uh, I, I know about the games, I've just not played them, so... <clears throat> Rewrite your genetic code so that you can shoot lightning. It's gamified. It. <laughs> yeah. It's, yes. Yeah. Though there is a great part where you can, you know, snap your finger and make a lighter. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so. So beneficial. In that. So I beneficial. know. So how much Light my say? barbecue on uh, the first. Uh, just. 
barbecue they also, lit. But that's exactly. And then when Ryan started to see Fontaine take control, he weaponized the plasmids. He weaponized the individualism. You can be the guy that shoots fire from your fingertips, but do it for me. And Fontaine's sitting there going, oh, you feel slighted by Ryan? Rapture not all it's cracked up to be? Fontaine's home's for the poor. Just serving my army. Interesting. And, yeah. And, well, and that's, that's one of the things that is it's, that's one of the things that we, we, we don't see too much in society anymore is having these conversations of how much is com- how, how much control do we give to the community where it's too far. Because eventually at some point there has to be a figurehead. And how much individualism goes too far because at some point there has, has to be, to be a, a figurehead. figurehead. There's, there's and, this idea that, and, and you and I have had this conversation God many, knows how many times and, at this point, that if you want to have a strong individual... You have to have a strong community backing that individual. And if you want to have helping, a strong, and a strong community, community is made of strong, strong individuals. individuals. Exactly. Yeah. The, the community is made of strong individuals. And so and so this idea that you th- this idea that you compare and contrast the two is is unbelievably brilliant. Oh, and it's and, great. And it comes out of left field in this art deco first person shooter. Right. Like the, yeah, the, a first person. Halo. It yeah, comes out of a yeah. different version of Halo. Exactly. And brilliant. And, and so it also, it, that, what's brilliant about the game designers using a shooter to do this too. And they might have wanted to go in a different direction. I've seen some interviews that said they might have wanted this to be a little bit more RPG-like. Right. Like their previous game, System Shock 2. Um, Heard of it? Yeah. Not it's aware of, of it. The pioneers. It's anyway, I'm not the gamer that's, of the group. Yeah, You're the yep. gamer. Like the gamers, really in, the gamers yeah. in the audience will know what yeah. I'm talking about. Although I have my, yeah. my fancy controller back here now. Yes, so. indeed. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Birthday present. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, but um, no, and it's very interesting to see. And this is uh, the other point I would argue that Bioshock raises the question on is never trust your figurehead. One will always rise, but should they be there? It's... Uh, Fontaine was the figurehead of the more social oriented, the community oriented, but he was a con man trying to seize power. He was no better than Ryan. Ryan was saying everybody can be free to do what they want, but when push came to shove, he took that away to support himself. Your figurehead has to be questioned. So essentially, you know, the the idea being that if you give too much control away Mm -hmm. to... Uh, uh, if you give eventually they will take it eventually yeah, was, yeah if you give too much power to one individual so individualism can become highly corrosive whereas community in a community you want a leader and the yeah. leader of the community can become highly corrosive and, and this is what's also really interesting is that by every you know kind of you know loose interpretation of it Fontaine did exactly what Ryan said to do do what serves you best, take what you can, and don't worry about the consequences. And he did that by going through and weaponizing the people and weaponizing a socialistic outlook, saying that everybody should be more equal. But he did an objectivist or individualistic approach to do a socialistic thing, or through socialistic means. It's very interesting. And so this whole idea of when you corrupt your philosophy to gain power i think you've lost the philosophy in general well i mean and that goes to the, that, that goes to show you know anytime you 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 fall into this idea that you know you know uh once power gained power will never be lost yes, indeed idea it, it it really does defy the idea of community and individualism mm-hmm. And, and 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 you start to see that it becomes this 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 uh, uh, monarchy style. Yeah. Um, well, no, we believe in the individual, so this is our guy to tell us how the individuals Individual. live. No, we believe in the community, so this is the guy, to- and that defies individualism and community <laughs> because you're giving power away to those individuals, yep. to certain individuals that are power, they're, they're monarchies, and- they're they're hierarchies, they're they're bureaucrats, they're they're insert words, they're, yeah, insert insert <laughs> thing that is because again, individuals. Individuals are, are, are the best that they can be when the community supports them and guides them and, and that, shows them which way to go. And communities are the best that they can be when individuals so, make the communities good. And so and everybody, it takes both of them to yes. do it. And so people look at Bioshock and they say the downfall of Rapture was the wonder drug, the one that lets you shoot lightning yeah, bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or lightning bees. Um, no, that's not really a thing, but it should have been. Lightning bees. <laughs> bees? <laughs> bees. That is a Cards Against Humanity reference Indeed. for those who have played it. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it was never the drug. The drug came at the 
cost of never questioning your ethics. The you know, lack of ethics led to a bunch of people feeling let down by Rapture's idea, which let Fontaine con them into being his army well, okay. by offering the helping hand. He, there's even an audio log where he, maybe he says it to the player character that, you know, you throw them a nickel and they'll serve you unloyingly as long as all they have is a penny. So the idea here is that... That he weaponized at, it. <laughs> at what point does one not use their individualism or their community enough that they decide to sacrifice both unto great men? Indeed. There's a fantastic quote, and I'll let you guess who. Oh, God. It's that, um, you know, those who sacrifice freedom for safety and security can deserve neither and will lose both. Benjamin Franklin. Thank you. Benjamin Franklin. No, and, and it's very true, though. It's very true, but one of, and, and one of the things that so many people don't discuss, and, and, and that's why looking into and kind of researching Bioshock for this on, on my own, because yeah. I haven't I played said, it. I sent him uh, one of our fellow content creator channels, um, and uh, I get a phone call about 20 minutes later going, Matt, <laughs> I need help the, here. The, what are you going to talk well, about? <laughs> there's so many things in Bioshock. Yeah. But the idea of of individualism and and community because those are the two parallel ideas here yeah is being an individual and the community but what's stronger and when you try to weaponize the individual against the community the community against, against the individual individual eventually both of those give power away to corruptors and, and, and mm -hmm. these monarchies and and this tyrants. idea that uh, tyrants essentially yeah. yes yeah. because they'll use both because and the idea is that and, and, I, and, and I think Bioshock is brilliant for this, just having looked into what, what you've sent me, it is this idea that we can get it right, but we have to be balanced. Yes. We have to, I have to do everything that I can do to provide for my family, but I cannot do it at the expense of my neighbor. Yeah. Because once that happens, then my neighbor takes too much and I go, well, wait a minute, I couldn't stop that, you stop it for me. Yep. And so, or, vice versa right mm -hmm. or well no but i was helping my neighbor and that person and so and, and you so see, now we're all going to group up and yeah, under this yeah leader you're going to have a group of individuals mob. you're going to have a group of community yeah and then you're going to and every group has a leader and you're mm -hmm. going to have a, and it, it, it it's this it's this unbelievable idea that they compare and contrast is that individualism is not the right way <laughs> And, and essentially socialism or community. I, I, and I use the word community here yeah. very intentionally. intentionally. Yeah. Very, very intentionally because I don't think they're going for the idea of, of, of socialism. I think they're going more for the ideas. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I, there were some Marxist ideas. That's in there. why I mentioned Marx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there was absolutely some Marxist ideas. I used some ideas of his socialistic but, but, ideals. Exactly, but, yeah. exactly. But I think they were going for more of this idea that people take care of each other. And this other guy said individuals take care of themselves. But I think the thing that they most the people miss too is that, that there's is most people miss is they think that they're a dichotomy where they need to be a singularity. Yes. And once that you realize that individuals must take care of themselves inside of the community while still doing their best to also provide for the community, mm -hmm. that is that point at which we will would actually see this 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 harmony in in society. Yes. And that's something that I love that they took. The, these two ideas that people seem to think are separated and they and they did separate them in mm -hmm. Bioshock. And took them to the and logical extremes. And that's why, and they took yeah. them to the logical extremes and I love that. And that's why I said it's just it's this idea that Bioshock, this video game, had the, had the complexity and the thought to do that. Ken Levine is to, a smart to, man. Huh? <laughs> Ken Levine, the lead director of Bioshock, what, he's, a, he's a smart guy. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. But, but, but I mean, to think of and those things and to understand team. that, but to say that one wasn't right, one wasn't the other, we need to find a different way. No, it was, but some things are good. Uh, some things are good, but we need to combine those themes. We're short on time, so I'm going to oh, wow. cut across on you real quick here just so I can get <laughs> yeah. this out. Yeah. It's the far, unspoken third person who keeps us in check. Yes. The timer. Yes. Is uh, far too often I hear Bioshock is a rail against capitalism. No, it is not, because it's not an inherently capitalistic society. There was no funding of in, you know, scientific endeavor, endeavor that caused the downfall. No, it was everybody, you know, you had two camps. The people that only looked out for themselves and the people who thought that the community needed to look out for them and thus gave power to it. And so you see that and you see how the two clash 
and yet they, you know, they both ended up destroying this magnificent place. Rapture itself is a technical marvel. Okay, okay, so so both so in the terms idea of that, the so the fictional place that, and the gaming so, representation. So the idea of it. that so essentially what you're saying is that Bioshock tried to push the message that capitalism and and community are not evil, but capitalism needs to be able to let individuals rise up so that they can help Capitalism their community. Comes there has well. to be moral. Adam Smith. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm getting. These yep. guys, Adam Smith. Yep. Moralistic. And, and Rand. Yeah. Yeah. That is inspiration. Agree, disagree, but that's where yeah. they're at. I, we might need a part two on this We're going to need a part two on this one. <laughs> that was too good. So expect a part two sometime in the we future. We can delve into some of the Bioshock 2-isms yes, as well. Yes, yes. And we'll hit but, infinite at some point as well. Yes, but the timer yeah. is mad at us, and the timer is there to keep us in check, and hopefully you guys will uh, let us know what your thoughts are down below. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs>